Welcome to Get Inspired with Jason, the podcast and YouTube show. You know I inspire thousands each and every year, and I get inspired by thousands, but today's guest took it to another effing level. His name is Akshay Nanavati. He is an author. He is a Marine Corps veteran, and most importantly, he has fought in Iraq with the Marines And it's going to blow your mind. Stay tuned because this episode is going to get caliente. You're now tuned in to Get Inspired with Jason Roselle, the podcast and YouTube show. The Get Inspired with Jason Roselle show brings you amazing topics and a variety of guests ranging from celebrities, reality stars, social media influencers, entrepreneurs, and major success stories. You're gonna gain a large amount of knowledge and priceless advice. It doesn't matter if it's in childhood trauma, anxiety, depression, raising up and leveling up your business. The Get Inspired Show is gonna get you thriving. So if you're ready to transform your life in all areas, get ready because the show starts now. So for a lot of you that know me, I am always running the streets of Scottsdale and the parks in Scottsdale. A few months ago over the summer, I met a gentleman by the name of Akshay. And this man was holding on to dear life at 120 degrees. He had a rope tied around his hips. And it was of a tail end of a humongous tire. I stopped running and I said, dude, what are you doing? He says, I'm training. And I said, training for what? I'm training to go to Antarctica. Akshay, please tell the world what the hell you were doing because your story is amazing. Thank you, brother. And thank you for having me. So what I'm currently doing, you know, as we spoke about when we first met, I'm training for a solo 110 day, 1700 mile coast to coast crossing of the entire continent of Antarctica. I will be dragging a 400 pound sled for 12 plus hours a day. And if I pull this off, it'll be the first ever coast to coast ski crossing of the continent, completely unsupported, meaning no kites, no dogs, and man hauling all my own food and supplies for the entire journey with no gear drops as well. Wow. 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 Brother, the, the audiences want to know. I want to know. What is your purpose behind this? Beautiful question. You know, so any big goal, I believe there's there there ideally is two motivations. There's a selfish and a selfless. So selfishly, for me, this is a journey to enlightenment. It's a journey to awaken my own inner Buddhahood, that divinity that we all have. I see that Buddha behind you. It's just beautiful and something I really resonate with. You know, we all have this limitless power within us. But when you go into the depths of solitude, the depths of struggle, the depths of suffering, I mean, Antarctica is one of the most hostile environments on the planet, right? Minus 40 degrees, hurricane force winds. I've been there before. I've lost two fingers to frostbite there before. It is a savage, unforgiving place. But in that struggle, in that isolation, you get to open doors into the human soul that are very rarely opened. And so I go to open those doors and to access places within myself that I don't know what I will find and to unleash that inner divinity to access transcendence, right? When when you are in that level of struggle, you have to transcend to keep moving forward. And for me, suffering is a training ground for self-transcendence and self-transcendence is an experience of God. So I go out there for that selfishly. Selflessly, it is to bring back the wisdom from the edge in order to help others navigating their own version. Everybody's got their own version of an Antarctica to cross. Everybody's facing their own polar storm, right? But because I get to go so far out on the edge, and I mean get to, like it is a privilege. As you know, you mentioned I was in the Marines, I've volunteered in post-conflict zones, I've worked with survivors of sex trafficking, former child soldiers, people in poverty, leper colonies. So I've seen the darkness of the human condition, I've battled it within myself with PTSD, depression, addiction, and so having faced all these, pla- these 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 challenges in the human condition, because now I get to go so far out there, I get to open those doors and be a, simply a messenger for wisdom that can only be granted at the edge. And so it's my responsibility to bring that wisdom back. That's why I come on shows like this. I do speaking. We're filming a documentary around it to bring that wisdom and help others transcend their own suffering, to face their own demons and rise above it with greater courage and strength in order to move through life's challenges. Woo! Wow. That, that man, I have 
chills all over my arms right now. Most people that are watching or listening to this right now are saying, this guy's out of his mind, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? I, I relate to you and I commend you because I'm a huge advocate of turning pain into purpose, mm -hmm. right? And you clearly mm -hmm. are the definition of purpose, but everyone's purpose is different. Absolutely. Now, before we go deep, because see, I like to kind of go backwards a little because a lot of times people be like, oh, okay, wow. Yeah, he's done a lot. He's missing two fingers. You know, I want to go on how it all started. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the pain and we don't have to go super long, but like the main things for anyone that's watching or listening saying, well, you know, my life sucks. You know, Akshay has it all together. He's an author of a well-known book and blah, blah, blah. He's made it. You know how people assume they think yeah. your, your life is perfect, mm -hmm. but you and I both know, cause we came from a lot of hurdles to mm -hmm. speak lightly, how we got here today. Mm -hmm. So why don't you take the audience to your addiction? How did that start? Your yeah. depression? Um, how I want to know, how did you lose both of your fingers? So let's go. Give it to me, brother. Roger that. When I moved to the U.S. at the age of 13, I was born in India, lived in India, Singapore. I got very, very heavily into drugs soon after that at the age of 15, 16. As you mentioned, struggled with addiction, lost two friends to addiction. Very self-destructive. Used to cut myself. I still have these scars on my arm, burning myself, and was going down this path. I would have 100% OD'd and died just like my friends did until I saw the movie Black Hawk Down. What, kind, seen, of what kind of drugs before it? Uh, the, the, I mean, I started off with marijuana, alcohol, went into much deeper stuff, uh, LSD, cocaine, and was at a place ready to do everything, like ready to do PCP, ready to do anything. And thankfully I got out of that world before the same friend who me and one, me, one of the friend got into hard stuff together. He went into heroin and OD'd and died. I was going down that, but the movie Black Hawk Down changed my life. Watching that movie, watching the courage of men putting their lives on the line for another human being. It made me question this worthless, selfish, meaningless existence I was living. And almost overnight, after you know, after watching the movie, I read the book Black Hawk Down, devoured book after book on military and life in combat, and almost overnight stopped doing drugs and decided to join the military. It wow. took me about a year and a half to get in because I have a blood disorder that two doctors told me would kill me in boot camp. I'm also flat-footed in scoliosis. So all these were disqualifying conditions, but this was post-9-11 world. So here's a young kid who wants to go Marine Corps infantry on the front lines. We'll find a way for you. So the Marines birthed the very essence of everything I am today because the Marines taught me how to suffer. It taught me courage. It taught me the ability to move through struggle and hardship in order not just to find the greater power within that each of us have to do that, but to do it in service of something greater. When you're in the core, nobody cares about your well-being. What matters is the men and the mission. You live for something bigger than you. And that is profoundly beautiful. While it sucks at times, there are moments when you hate it because you don't want to go on a mission because you're tired, but you do it because you have to, because it's not about you. And that birthed the very essence of who I am today. From there, you know, I was deployed to Iraq in 07 as a Marine Corps infantry Marine. I used to, my, one of my jobs out there was to walk in front of our vehicles looking for bombs, for IEDs, before they could be used to kill me and my fellow Marines. So navigated a lot of fear, adversity, war is obviously a very stressful environment, came back and struggled tremendously. That's when I was diagnosed with PTSD, lost a friend in the war, lost a couple of junior Marines to suicide, struggled with depression, heavy drinking, like drinking a bottle of vodka a day. One morning after five days of binge drinking, I was seconds away from picking up a knife and slitting my wrist because I just couldn't take it anymore. That moment was the trigger that began my climb out of the abyss. It wasn't by any means a smooth one. I broke my sobriety a ton, but that that was the moment where I started delving into neuroscience, psychology, spirituality. It ultimately led to writing my book, Fear of Honor, to help others navigate their fears. And I found a lot of my peace in not only building the business Fear of Honor, but through these adventures on the edge. And I went from, I mean, I've mountain climbed in the Himalayas. I've been cave diving, skydiving, ice climbing. I've uh, spent one month dragging a 190 pound sled for 350 miles across Greenland. And now this journey is kind of, it's the culmination of my entire life to do something this hard, this challenging, that's never been done before to pull off a crossing like this. It's kind of like my entire life has been leading, leading up to this now. Wow. 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 I, this is going to be a great video clip. Show us, show us your fingers. How did, how did you lose your fingers, Mister Author of Fear? 
Seriously. So I was I was in Antarctica two years ago on an expedition out there. We were uh, skiing up this very remote glacier. My team and I became one of only 26 human beings on Earth to successfully climb this glacier on skis. And after we got up there onto the polar plateau at about 8,000 feet, winds get savage, like hurricane force winds. And uh, it was day 17 of the expedition. I was on the seventh hour. And, you know, uh, this wasn't my first cold weather expedition. I've been on many cold weather expeditions. I was in my gloves, wearing my mittens, doing everything right. and yet. Somehow, not like, and this is very objective. I actually assessed it with my team, like really try to look, did I do anything wrong? But I wasn't walking around with no gloves. I wasn't holding metal, but somehow these two fingers got frostbite out there on day 17. So we had to stop after about seven hours, eight hours of skiing that day. And we wrapped the fingers, try to hope they would get better next day. They did not. So day 18, I had to be evacuated and, and these two fingers got hit really badly. Now this finger, which is my right ring finger, it got black and it had to be surgically removed, the tip. The left middle finger, it actually recovered fully. So this was a good finger. But earlier this year, I was on the Arctic on a series of training expeditions preparing for Antarctica. And it got to minus 37 and below, very cold temperatures. And when once you get frostbite, you're always more prone to frostbite. So this finger... It was getting, obviously I did things right. I didn't get frostbite again. Uh, you know, I, I've learned what to do even better now to be even more careful. Because again, I wasn't doing anything wrong, but there are things you can do to be even more careful. So I have to now take those extra precautionary measures inevitably, right? But once you have frostbite, you're more prone to it. So because this finger was a liability to me, it, it would get slightly colder than the other fingers. So to me, it was a liability for a 110 day journey across Antarctica. So I made the bold, audacious decision to preemptively have the tip of the finger removed. I went to India and, and told the doctor I want it surgically removed because I don't want it to compromise. Like imagine I'm 60 days into Antarctica and I'm at the South Pole, the coldest part of the journey, you know, halfway and it's 9,000 plus elevation, you know, and this finger gets frostbite, my middle, my, my left middle finger and my journey's over. That to me would be devastating. So to me, it was a very small price to pay to complete the mission. This is just the, the mindset is always the mission is more important than you. Oh, man, you are making me feel so many emotions right now. And I can only imagine what people are thinking right now. Like you make me feel lazy as fuck. <laughs> Not the intention. <laughs> I'm just, you know, and I don't cuss much on my shows, but damn, I got to I got to say wow 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 it talk about like you said being selfless right mm -hmm. and 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 we're gonna do a quick segue segue here because when i met you right um god i, I want to talk about your your relationship because you know i i'm very fond yes but but really quick to, to keep people motivated what would be the three smallest but biggest tips you can give someone that is just so unmotivated or stuck emotionally mm -hmm. like you were to start elevating their life just give me three things that they can do right here right now go first thing do some sort of exercise the uh, people you don't have to be confident to take action that is a huge misconception C confidence is the result of action not the fuel there's this overwhelming idea in the personal development world to focus on conquering limiting beliefs forget about all that you don't you don't need to believe in yourself to get started belief is built on the battlefield if there's one big thing you take away remember this belief is built on the battlefield i was the least confident person you could possibly imagine i kid you not terrified of everything I built myself into the person I am today by going to war with myself. So you got to go to war with yourself. Do something hard physically. Do 100 burpees. I don't give a shit how long it takes. Suffer. It'll teach you. Second is practice stillness. Stillness and suffering are two of the core ways to grow. So spend, spend like, I, as you know, I did 10 days sitting in a dark room. You don't have to go to that extreme. Put yourself in a dark room for one hour. It will be uncomfortable. That's the point. And finally, social. Put yourself in environments where you surround yourself with people who are more of who are who are pursuing a path and higher along the path than you are. Whatever the path, mental, physical, spiritual, financial. Put yourself in rooms like that. That is not that hard to do. You can find places. Like for example, coming to the relationship to segue that. My fiance went to a place called Optimize here in Scottsdale, as you know, where they do cold tub saunas knowing that you're going to meet high vibe people there, right? These are people seeking personal growth. And she is someone like that as well. She met the founder who's a friend of mine, Michael Roviello. He introduced us. So suffering, stillness, social. Those are the three things. Suffer mentally, physically, put yourself through stillness, 
so social. Surround yourself with a network of people who will make you better, who are pushing themselves. My tribe here, you've met some of them. We all make ourselves, we all make each other better. So put yourself in those rooms and that's how you will grow as well. I completely agree on all of those tenfold. But now I got to push you a little bit, right? Because this, this is the point of, of this show. What do you tell someone? I'm going to take it even back to me, say, 20 years ago. I was mm -hmm. one of the most negative, freaking minded people ever. I was 225 pounds of pure fat, depressed, anxious driven, and blamed the world for all of my issues, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Insecurity is a mug. Now, what do you tell somebody that is saying, well, I'm fat, Akshay. I don't have money to go out to cool settings, right? I I don't want to sit in a dark room and mm -hmm. I don't, I, you know, I overthink. So I can't get on the treadmill. Like, let's push, push the oh, button. Oh, love, love it. Yeah. So if we were going deeper, in this case, I was sort of offering advice. What I would do working with somebody like that is I would start digging deeper into their life. I would ask questions to understand what, what got you into that space, drive you. I would activate the pain, right? And you can you, ultimately the goal here is because... Pain is the greatest driver of change. And at the very core of human behavior, there's two things, the need to avoid pain and the desire to gain pleasure. When you are in the depths of that hell, like you said, you were you know, overweight. And again, I've been there, right? Struggling with addiction. In the depths of the hell, the number one thing, forget about driving to pleasure. You just get to have to get out of pain. So the goal, my job, and I do actually do coaching with people, one-on-one -on -one coaching, is to activate the pain enough to see if you're willing to take one step. And that's what we would do. We would dig deeper. All right, you're fat. You're overweight. You're uh, you feel like you know the the world is to blame. Got it. We're gonna dig a little deeper into this. We would start understanding your constructs of reality, the frames that shape your reality, and then I would offer some insights about taking responsibility. And then you make a call. Do you want to change or do you want to stay stuck in this desperation? Right. Like as Henry Thoreau said. Most men, and I would argue most people, live lives of quiet desperation. So as long as you can activate in their mind that, hey, if you want to stay in this, go for it. It's all you. Stay stay in the shittiness. But you're coming to me to work, then let's get the fucking work. And again, I get I get pretty intense when I work with people because we're going to drive them, right? And look, I know what it's like to be in the, te the depth, so I do empathize. But the pain has got to be greater of, I mean, at any crossroads in life, there's going to be pain. Any crossroads, whatever the path, right? I'm going to stay overweight and eat, keep eating the, the junk food, or I'm going to do something differently and now go to the gym. You're going to suffer either way. So what I actually have clients do is I will say, write down the rewards of path one and the struggles of path one. Then write down the rewards of path two and the struggles of path two. And the question to ask is not which passion do you want to follow, but which struggle are you willing to endure? And almost always, when you get people clear enough on the pain of staying in the shitty reality, They'll start doing something. And I'm not saying it's going to be a magical, you know, sunshine, rainbows, and unicorns overnight. Absolutely not. But we're going to start with one action, one small thing. And then you got to stack the wins because you're right now, you're going to be in that place where you don't believe in yourself. You think you're a piece of shit. I've been there. I thought I was the biggest piece of shit alive, right? You're going to demonize yourself. You're going to hate yourself. Got it. Let me do one win. Hey, I'm sober for a week. Awesome. Let me celebrate that win. Now let me stack it. I went to the gym for two days in a row. Awesome. I'm going to stack the wins. You stack the wins enough, and there's a lot of processes to doing this. Put a calendar, mark X's every day. Psychologically, that makes you build the wins. You stack the wins enough, you become whoever the hell you want to be, right? Yeah. I didn't get to being an Antarctic explorer overnight, dude. It took a minute to get here. Yes, yes, yes. Guys, take notes. Seriously, like this is this is what it comes down to. I'm going to throw one more before we get into love and relationships because my audience is huge on relationships. What do you tell someone? I deal with this every year for the past, what, 12 years I've been a coach. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They commit. They pay. You as a coach, right? They start losing weight. Their life starts getting better. Maybe emotionally. Everything's just in sync. And all of a sudden, three weeks, three months. Akshay, man, you know, my car is having car issues. I, I can't afford continuing. Akshay, you know, um, there's something wrong with my basement. I got a, there's a plumbing issue and I get it. It's life. And I say this because I've worked and I've hired many mentors and I still have. Yeah. Mentors. Yeah. There's a, I, my life is a storm. There's always a storm, but the storm doesn't last. So what do you tell people? A, take a break from coaching and developing yourself or B, make it fucking work. 
what what do you what what, what do you, i mean i'm just saying yeah no love it i think you know the answer right like I know the answer yeah i know and i love i love the question i love the question because to that point is exactly what you're saying. Things will start getting better, but then a new storm will hit, right? That's the nature of the human experience. There's always going to be storms. And if you feel like I have to wait till to ride out this storm to then attain the next level of growth, you're setting yourself up a failure. And I would kind of point this out. The, the, the spiritual mastery happens through the storms. It's in the storms that we find transcendence. This is why I go to Antarctica, where there's a literal storm. I mean, hammering storms, because it's if you're able to stay the eye of the storm, if you can maintain stillness and mastery and growth and be literally that calm in the storm, be peace in the face of chaos, that's mastery. So when life is throwing a hundred storms your way, you can choose to take a break from the, 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 the growth in order to address those storms. But if you do, you are going to be consumed by the storms. That's not even like an opinion. That's a statistic. That's reality. You know, that just is what happens. And if you point this up to people, point this out to people, it becomes evident. Right. Because the deeper inner work is going to continue no matter what the external storms are. And it's on you to continue that path or you will break or life will break you. Life is hard, man. We all know this. It's going to punch you in the face. But can you keep riding through? Can you maintain that ability to stay still in the face of chaos? Absolutely. And, and external external influences yeah, like a coach give you the ability to do that, because no matter how self-aware you are, how we all are, we are all trapped in our own paradigms of reality. We're all trapped in our lens of how we see the world. No matter how self-aware you are, right? We don't know what we don't know. All of us. I don't know what I don't know. So a coach, an external source who has who's attained a high degree of mastery on the path, the spiritual path, the mental path, they will be able to offer you the, that look into your blind spots. And only then can you start doing something you've never done before. Because if you keep doing what you've always done, you'll keep getting more of what, what you've always gotten. Right. An external source provides that access point into your blind spots. Facts, facts, facts. Only 98% of the world won't get it, won't mm -hmm. do anything about it. It's that 2%. And you and I already know it, just like a lot of students in my life, wellness and relationship coaching academy know it. And I know a lot of them are listening or watching right now. This is the stuff. It's not coming from me. It's not just coming from Akshay. These are facts. All right. We have eight minutes left. Let's rock this out. Love. Lust, romance. I met actually, like I said, a few months ago, and this man was single, and he has the biggest heart, as you know. Like, much love to you, brother. Thank you, brother. Um, very briefly, tell us. I, I, you know, you don't have to go into the whole story, but you're engaged and going to get married very soon. Tell mm -hmm. us what i'm i'm happy for you bro tell us thank you brother yeah, yeah, yeah. i've been uh, dating her now we've been dating for four and a half months and i proposed to her on the two month anniversary when we were when we met through my friend michael i mentioned optimize he introduced us uh we the first time we spent any time together was on a hike where i hadn't eaten food in five and a half days and and I, so I got so delirious. I was delirious, lightheaded, throwing up, dizzy, going on a five-hour hike after five and a half days of no food. She had an allergic reaction, so her eyes were swelled semi-shut. And uh, we got to go deep very quickly, you know. And uh, right from the get-go, on the second date, we talked about me going to Antarctica for four months. We talked about I me. Mean, we've talked about everything under the sun you can possibly imagine. And we went deep. And that's what allowed us to build what we have. I mean, we have an insanely, you met her, we an insanely strong relationship that we've cultivated in a very short time through a foundation of rock solid communication and the ability to go very deep, very quickly to address all the Everything you can think of, we've talked about, you know, and we also have a lot of play. Like we're always uh, talking shit to each other. We're always playful with each other. So when you have that ability to be on the edges of both play and go as deep as possible, it creates the foundation for something as rock solid as we've built. I mean, we have, and I do not throw this word lightly. We have a perfect relationship. We've never fought once and we never will. We've never had anything resembling a fight and we never will. Okay. Okay. You said it not once, but twice, ladies and gentlemen, you heard him. We never have, we never will why will you never fight? Because we have created a foundation for how we communicate and which uh, the, the, the way that, uh, that we're able to maintain that is because both of us have now there's always more growth to be had, but both of us have invested a great deal of time, effort, energy, money in mastering the most important relationship there is, which is the relationship with yourself. Yes. I have done a ton of inner work. She has done a ton of inner work. So when issues present themselves, I mean, we have disagreements that's human, but they never even, they, we'd, they don't, we don't, that doesn't present itself with tension or an argument. We talk about it. We've even addressed, okay, if something comes up, how will we address it? 
you know, we have challenging issues about like, okay, like, for example, one of the issues was like, okay, what, what about after Antarctica? What are you going to do? Are you going to keep going away for four months every year, you know? And I was, so we had a long talk about this. I told her about, it's very much in my nature to be an adventure and explorer. I want to hear how you take, so how, how you feel about that. Like one of the core things when you're doing that is, is never invalidating the other person's feelings in relationships. You know, it'll often be like, you shouldn't feel that way or some version of that. Like my way is the right way to feel. We never invalidate the other person's feelings. We always take 100% ownership. Like that's another foundation. Anything happens, we're both, I can't tell you how much we, like little things will happen. We're both like, oh, I'm sorry, that's on me. And she's like, no, no, I'm sorry, that's on me. And and we always do that because our number one go-to is it's on me, it's not on you, right? So we're taking ownership of our of of everything of everything right we have mastered that relationship with the selves we approach things as a team that we're going to work together we don't invalidate when the other person is, is is expressing their feelings so we allow each person to be heard to be felt and we have to be self aware enough to communicate what we need you know so i might say hey like even for example the the a conversation about needing alone time that's something that many couples have told us they really struggle to have because you like it feels weird if 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 somehow i feel like i need alone time is it saying that you know not, it's nothing about the other person we all are human beings. We need alone time, right? I, God knows I do. I clearly alone, enjoy it. I, I thrive on solitude. So does she. So we had a really deep talk about it. Hey, we, I, I was creating some alone time. Let's create some structures around it. How would you feel? How do I feel? And we address that. So nothing ever becomes a fight or anything resembling it. Wow. Wow. Th- this is, okay. I'm, the next time I do a seminar on relationships you're coming with. Uh, the honor, brother. <laughs> people need to listen to Akshay, okay? <laughs> okay, mi gente de España, Puerto Rico, Cuba. <laughs> I mean, man, we're going. All right, so let's just recap this. This is, this is, oh man, this is so exciting. And I just can't hide it. All right, <laughs> so you heard it from Akshay. So now don't, do you have, number one, you have to become in the best relationship with yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Number two, what you, you, you she, he met his partner, his fiance, right? And in a place that is for people that are like minded, exactly. You see, I go back and rewind how he met him, how he met her. Number three, they both have struggled, turned their pains into purpose, and met at a place, even though Akshay is not 100% healed because nobody is, right? All her stuff. We're all still working through. It's, it's it's no one's ever perfect, but they created a foundation because they both have individual healthy boundaries, and collectively they're working through that together. Which is why, ladies and gentlemen, say it again, Akshay, we will never, never buy. Fight. <laughs> okay, because when people hire me or sign up to my academy, like I'm just sick and tired of fighting my wife. Let me tell you something, Jason. I'm like, hold on, I get it. But are you fighting? It's like, it's fight or is it a disagreement? Because a disagreement doesn't have to turn into a fight if you're smart. Not at all. We have actually very, very peaceful conversations about things. Exactly. And it's you, your partner, and the issue. Not you are the issue, my partner. Exactly. Exactly. Akshay, where can people get your book, Fearvana? Fearvana is on Amazon, Kindle, paperback, Audible. You can find me on Instagram at Fearvana. We also have a crowdfunding page for The Crossing at Great Soul, S O U L, greatsoulcrossing.com. And the book, we've donated all the proceeds to charity, and currently we're putting it all towards The Crossing as well. So um, you can find all, of, find all of it out there. Absolutely. And what's the biggest takeaway uh, people will get from getting your book? Like, what's the biggest, like, if you were to tell in 15 seconds, what is the book about? It's about developing a positive relationship to struggle so you can use your pain, your fear in order to find, live, and love your path. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. Uh, If you could have any superpower, what would it be, Akshay? Any superpower? Wow, good question. Uh, Looking at it from the lens of uh, superheroes, I think the ability to heal, like Wolverine style, would be awesome, Uh, (laughs) especially what I do, playing on the edges. Okay. Uh, But that's like when I think about the superhero movies, that's where I went. All right. uh, Next one. In 30 seconds, when you first met me, what did you think about me? I loved your curiosity, man. You were curious, you were inquisitive. And I think curiosity is one of the core virtues for mastery of mind, body, and spirit. So I was really in admiration of that, which is what led to us connecting our friendship, you coming over to hang and us having this conversation. So mad respect for that, man. I think that's a testament to your uh, desire and pursuit of mastery. 
Uh, thank you so much. And I appreciate you and our friendship. Last question. Um, if anyone is unhappy in their relationships, should they A, try to fix the relationship with their partner first or try to B, fix the relationship with themselves first? Fix the relationship with the self first. You can't have a healthy relationship with your partner if you don't have a healthy relationship with yourself. Just nature of the beast. Bonus. I'm getting people bonus. Um, people that you love that say later they go into depression, anxiety, it could be of many disorders. They don't say they don't want the help. They don't want to go to therapy, prescription pills, whatever's going to help them. Do you A, write it out and hope they get fixed? Or do you remove yourself from the relationship if you stayed a while and they just don't want to fix themselves? Yeah, that's a tough one, right? For sure. Because especially if it's someone you really love. And the thing is, you can't ever motivate somebody to change. You People, we think we can. And we all have said this relationship, I'll get them to change, right? We've all done that. God knows I've done that. Uh, but you, it's not going to happen, right? So the best thing you can do if you want someone you love to change is to be the example. You know, Gandhi said, be the change we wish to see in the world. And I, I like I've seen parents who will tell their kids not to drink and do drugs. And then they're getting they're getting drunk every weekend and doing drugs. That's not going to work. People are not going to follow what you say. They're going to follow what you do. Be the example and people around you will follow that. People who love you. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate you. I admire you. And we're doing a part two. Are you ready? Can't wait, brother. Looking forward to it. Keep it caliente. Guys, make sure to follow Akshay right now on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Get his book and stay inspired. Until the next time. See you guys. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're a new viewer and don't forget to click on the bell so you can get notifications every time a new show releases. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and feel free to leave your comments. I'm Jason Roselle and you're watching Get Inspired with Jason.